All right, everyone, thank you so much for coming to our new counselor roundtable. Welcome to the world of school counseling. Um, we have some pros on our panel today. So um, they have some items that they will want to talk to you about. But really, we want to make sure you get your questions answered um, while you are here. So please don't leave with any unanswered questions. And we want to act as a resource for you today. So um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Trinity. Or if everybody wants to take a turn introducing themselves, um, that may be beneficial to our participants as well. So Trinity, start with you. Oh, I will also be monitoring the chat in the Q&A, so if you have anything, please drop it in and I will send your question along to the panel. Okay, so I am Trinity Walsh. I am the College and Career Counselor at Highlands High School, and this is my 20th year in school counseling, 13th year in Kentucky. Allie? Okay, great. Hey, everybody. I am Allie Kearns. I am a college counselor at Trinity High School in Louisville, Kentucky, and this is my fifth year on this side of the desk after spending six years in college admission. Jill? I'm Jill Boone. I'm the senior counselor at Marshall County High School. This is my 24th year in education and 15th year in counseling. Hi, I'm Chris Reeves. I'm an independent college counselor and a professional school counselor at St. Henry District High School. I've been counseling for about 25 years. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, maybe. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I thought that this might help us to kind of go through on some ideas of, you know, what we we're talking about. But if you have questions beyond this, please throw them up in the chat because that's really what we're hoping for. Um, but we all met last week to kind of talk about what we felt like maybe some of the things that um, new counselors might be um, struggling with and, and looking at during the year. And um, so we kind of want to know from you, like, what are you struggling with? So um, if you have some thoughts, you know, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll address those. Um, we're going to kind of talk about how we manage our offices effectively. Um, maybe some of the things we ask our students for the first time when we see them, um, you know, our understanding of the test optional process. And we've talked about that quite a bit today early on. Um, you know, in surviving the workload. So we all use some different tools that help us along the way with booking appointments and transcript and, and research management systems and how we reach out to families and how we support our relationships with our college counselors. So those were some of the thoughts that we had um, when we were talking about things that we thought maybe that you would be interested in. But obviously, if you're not interested in any of those things and you'd like to know more about us personally or something else, you know, feel free to throw it up in the chat. So um, does anybody want to start? Well, I will start because I'm really, really hoping people ask questions. Like that's what we need you to save us. Otherwise, we're going to start rambling about our offices. So, you know, we the, the intent of the session is that right, Trinity? I mean, that we are a panel and we we are here to try to at least throw our ideas out there and answer answer questions. So so please please save us. Uh, I have a question for the group. This is actually not in the chat, but I'm hoping that this will spur things along. Um, could you share maybe one of your biggest struggles that you had in your first year of high school counseling, or what was your biggest hurdle? I would say it's not just the first year. It was like many, like first, like many first years where that goes to one of the points we have made um, that, that you can book me. We did surveys. I finally learned that it might be good to do surveys of students to see how we're doing. And when I did, I got some results back that were kind of tough. Um, I think one of the reasons, I mean, lots of good things like, oh, Mr. Reeves is nice, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then some of the comments said, you're never there when we need you. And I'm thinking, oh, well, that's what counselors want to hear. They were not there for you. And that prompted the, the booking tool. 
that you can book me because we're spread so many ways that once, once I started using an appointment system, I felt more accessible to kids and kids maybe felt that we were more accessible. That was a big, I mean, to me personally, that was a big struggle. Chris, can you address with, with that piece of thing of um, scheduling the you can book me tool? Does your or did your administration at the time have certain stipulations on when you could pull students out of class? Because that is something that we are still dealing with. We only have certain types of classes we're allowed to pull students out of. And so that makes scheduling hard if the students were to use a you can book me tool. That is a struggle because you have to understand the culture of each school. I'm in a new school now and I have to get kids out of study hall maybe sometimes religion class, maybe sometimes electives, but I have to be super careful as to when I can get students. And if they have a study hall, they have to schedule during that time for me because they're, they're picking the appointments. Everyone knows that there are counseling emergencies and that just has to happen. But, but yeah, I mean, some schools, I know that Molly, when she was at St. X in Cincinnati, she couldn't get a kid out of anything. Like just couldn't get a kid. And we, I think what we do is just as, just as or more important than what's happening in classrooms for, I, I, I believe that, but that's hard to manage sometimes because you have to, you have to advocate for yourself in some ways within each school. Um, we had a, someone share in the chat that they do their scheduling through a Google form with a QR code. And that has been very helpful tremendously to, um, their students. Um, do any of y'all care to share how you do your scheduling? What platforms you use for maybe those counselors who aren't familiar with what we're referencing? Well, for me, I use um, bookings through um, Microsoft because that was something that was available to us, especially when we went virtual. Um, the thing I, I used to use, you can book me. Thank you, Chris. But then I switched over to this. And the reason I, I liked you, I like using bookings is because when a student signs up for an appointment, it automatically also makes a teams link for them. So if, for instance, if we should have to go on remote learning, they can still meet me at the same time. Cause we can get, we can meet through teams. Um, the other thing that I did was I, and, and I know everybody's a little bit different about this and whether or not they would be um, willing to do it or not, but I do have some days that I have later appointments after the school day is over. So the thing I like about that is, again, it's on team. So if a kid wants to leave and go home and they want to meet with me at 3.30 after the school day is over and they're home, we can still have our meeting because we can still do it through teams. So that's what I, I like about bookings. There are, you know, some limitations, but I think there are limitations with every kind of like appointment management tool that you have. Nothing is perfect, but um, that worked. That seems to work well for me. I think the systems are nice because they, they sync with your calendar. And it, if you have something in your calendar, it blocks the appointment time. And if you have an appointment time, it blocks the ability to put something else in your calendar. I'll go back to the question about what I struggled with the most. And I was thinking about talking to um, the new counselors. And when I was there, what did I feel? I felt like I was the only one who had the same problems because in my school, I'm the only one who works with the seniors and does that. And so finding a network of um, people and actually I went to kayak in my very first year. And then from that has helped me to build some relationships because you feel like nobody else knows what's going on or has the same problems or challenges that you have and having someone to bounce it off and say, hey, how do you do it at this high school? Um, a lot of counseling things that we've gone to in the past have been more geared towards elementary or middle. And so our region down here in um, region one, we have a region one counselors meeting just for high school counselors. So we can say, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? And that's been very helpful. And just even with last week or earlier when we met, just the four of us doing this panel, I learned things from Allie and Chris and Trinity, I hadn't even heard about. And so making those connections um, and I'm being able to call on others is something that I struggled with in the beginning because I didn't have that network. And now I feel like I could reach out to anybody in the counseling world and get an answer.
I think for me, the, the thing that was probably the most difficult the first couple years that I was a counselor was the inundation of information um, around the college application process. Um, and okay, so now I'm going to date myself because when I first started this gig, like there was no online, you know, college applications, we were still paper and pencil and there wasn't a lot online. The, you know, all we had was a view book and we would pull it out and say, here you go, look at the school. But, um, but, you know, even with having online presences now for universities, I think it's really important to make relationships with your college admissions people and um, to ask them questions when you don't understand something. And if they have, and I know that every district is very different about what, and in school about what they will allow their counselors to do, but like beg your administrators if you have to, to go to those breakfasts and lunches and things, because I think that's a great place to network. That's a great place to get a lot of information that sometimes, you know, um, would be difficult to get other ways, especially with emails. Like I, I get probably like, I don't know, like 15 emails a day from colleges with updates and it's hard to read through all of that stuff. And I'm sure you're all feeling the same thing and being at some of those events, it makes it more real. And I, and I hear them better. So, um, you know, if you have to, um, you know, beg for that. And if you need support from KYACAC and telling your administrators why it's important for you to go to those types of things, reach out to us so we can help support you um, because we, we want you to be able to attend those functions because I think it's super helpful when you're inundated with so much information. I think um, the thing that I probably struggled with most was letter of recommendation writing. And I know that can be tricky for some people, especially depending upon your counseling load. But if you can figure out a way to write a recommendation so that you are serving your students in the best way possible and not just reusing letters, I think that's that's really important. It took me probably two, three years to get to a point where I feel confident and comfortable in the way that my recommendations are structured. And a lot of that is thanks to Chris. So utilize your resources. Sweet. I think uh, another, another struggle probably, I mean, I just felt like when I first started, I did not do a very good job on college stuff at all because I just felt so swamped with everything else that I had to take care of with social emotional it, it, it with a large, large caseload that I just didn't have time for the college side. When I when when my mentor Jim Brown, who used to be a president of Kentucky ACAC, um, when he just kind of emphasized to me how important that was, I tr I made time for it, but it was still it took a lot of advocating with my principals. Uh, it just it it's it's difficult to do all the things that we are being asked to do in schools. Um, we had a. This is in the chat so everyone can see it, but in case some are just listening while working, because I know you all are very busy. Um, something that this counselor has found that is helpful during NTN virtual was also getting a Google voice number, which allows you the freedom um, to call with students without having to give out your personal cell phone number. They can call and text. It'll come straight to your cell phone, but you can also set time frames so that you cannot be contacted outside of those hours. That's some good advice as well. That's great advice. I haven't tried that yet. I need, I keep telling myself I need to. Um, but My no, mom maybe is a maybe teacher I will. and she utilized Google Voice last year when they went virtual and it was really helpful to her. Maybe I will try that. Whoever this person is, who put that? Thank you. Gerilyn Hanks. That's, she Jerry. has, she's put in two very helpful things. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gerilyn, you're going to be on this panel next year. That's what I was Our thinking. student. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to share earlier, I saw a question um, in one of our previous sessions, and um, it was an expression from someone on the high school side that said, you know, when we were having our test optional conversation, it said, please, can you all get this information to us sooner? Um, and some of that is beyond on the college, speaking as the college side, the college side control on when we can get you information, because it really depends on when our administrators decide on the information in terms of what our testing strategy is going to be, what our scholarship offerings are going to be, those sort of things. But outside of that, um, this is sort of a preaching to the choir, but 
coming to events like CCIE are the best way to get that information. That is what today is for. Hopefully we'll be back in person um, at some point soon, but that's why coming to these sort of things. So if you have somebody in your field of influence who has said like, where do the heck do I get this information? Encourage them to come to events like today. How about we talk a little bit about reaching out to families and and how you um, connect with your families, your students, and, and what do you do with in that kind of avenue? Does anybody want to talk about that? And then I can talk about what I do. We're using um, Instagram to get a lot of our information out to students specifically, but a lot of parents also follow our senior Instagram. It's where we post all kinds of important things like scholarships, visits, deadlines, and then school events as well. But um, this year we've moved to SCORE for our students. Well, this is our second year using SCORE. And we strongly encourage parents to connect themselves to their son's accounts. And we send at least one, but more like two to three emails every few days with important information that they need to have. So that's how we're pushing information out to our families from Trinity. I have a kind of a question for you all. Do you, do you believe in, because I've always struggled with not doing enough to advertise, like let's say scholarships or something. Like I've kind of landed personally on, I have one place everything is in one way to advertise that. But then I start to feel like people might suggest or administration or parents or whoever, well, do you send out this or do you tell them that way or do you tell them this way? And it's like, like find like 10 different ways to push information out. I personally have landed on one way. This is how we do it. If it's score, it's score. Like don't, you can't look at anything else. And, and I, I was wondering how you all felt about that and maybe how people in the session felt about that. Well, I think that's, that's a common um, complaint from I think our families and not just at, through our counseling office, but through like, I guess our district in general is because we're using Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and emails and websites and the school webpage and like all of these different platforms. And it is overwhelming and difficult. I think our department, what we have pretty much landed on is um, emails and Facebook are our two biggest things. I created a Facebook group for our school counseling department because we, we feel like those two platforms are the ones where like parents probably go to the most. Um, we have Instagram and Twitter. I don't think we post as often. Really, we use Twitter, I think, more for like accolades for our kids. Like, congratulations, you got into the school or you applied or something. Not really more, not really informational. Um, and then we do send out newsletters that are connected to our webpage um, as well. And they're not as regular as they should be, but I'm getting better at that. I've seen lots um, of August and September counselor newsletters. I have yeah. not seen a lot of any other months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I think, you know, I think that is a, a, a big theme and, and I think we probably need to do a better job of just saying, these are the two, two methods we're going to use and that's it. And like, if you can't find it on those two things then it doesn't exist. There's a good question that came up. I agree. I landed on that too. Yeah, Jill Bowman wants to know what transcript services you guys utilize and what are the benefits to the service program that you utilize? We use SCORE exclusively. We don't send transcripts any other way. Um, we like it because it's easy for the students to use and it's easy for us to track how many transcripts we've sent, where we've sent them because our admin always asks for that information at the end of the year. We, we used to use Naviance. Um, this is our first year using SCORE. So um, we're working through the kinks on that. 
Um, but we seem to like score a little bit better once we kind of understand it a little bit better. I think you're going to like it a whole lot better than Naviance. Um, and then for our graduated students, we use parchment because the graduated students transcripts don't go through our office. They go through the main office. Although I heard that that might be changing, but anyway, um, so, but we use parchment for those right now, but that's, that's what we use. We're score all the way it's it's the easiest we, we do it old school and just do it by student request but we're going to be looking into score after hearing the three of them talk about how, how great it is because I've, I've written that down for my admin meeting and um as far as um how i communicate with my parents and things i use a blog um i'm kind of like chris where i felt like it was just all over the place so i have one spot which is the blog but i do have a remind account that i will send out a text message to the students and say hey i've updated the blog and i don't spend a lot of time trying to cram it into the little characters you're limited to and remind but just go check out the blog so i will send little reminds out like that um Gerilyn, who also Gerilyn, you need to be on this committee next year so trinity make note uh, Gerilyn <laughs> says she's been counseling for six years, but she loves coming to the session for new ideas. So they had their tech people set up a listserv um, so they can create certain groups. And one of the counselors each week will write a weekly email that has all the needed info that needs to go out, scholarship info, deadlines, and then parents will add, send in a request to be added to the parent listserv. So on Friday afternoons is when the weekly update will go out to the parents who have opted in. Everyone, I do have to excuse myself. The class that I teach is about to begin. So thank you all for letting me be a panelist for today. If you have any questions about counseling or score or anything else that we might do, please feel free to send me an email. I'll pop that in the chat before I exit. But thank you all. Thanks, Hannah, for moderating for us. Bye. And it is 1230, even though we were a little bit, you know, behind. So um, I hope that we gave you some good ideas, even though it was a short amount of time. But um, I will put um, all of our contact information, like I will email that all out to everybody so that you have that. So if you want to ask us any other questions, um, you can do that as well. I'm also putting our contact information in the chat. 